What's up guys, I'm Paul Favorites from PJF Performance. Over the last four years, my job has been getting James Harden ready in the off season. So he plays 82 plus games every year. We gotta keep him durable, resilient, and healthy. But he's also competing for the MVP this year. So it's not just about health, it's also about explosiveness. It's about his movements on the court. So I'm gonna take you through a typical workout. Let's do it. I'm gonna take you through one of his workouts. We're gonna go through his dynamic warm-up. I'm gonna show you the mobility drills that I do with him, the core activation and the full body stability. Then we're gonna get into some good stuff, the more intense, higher intensity nervous system work. I got my trainer, Cam. He's gonna be demonstrating the exercises. Let's do it. So there's a couple different components of our warm-up. One, we're trying to increase our body heat. Two, we're trying to stretch out each major muscle group that we'll be training that day. Three, we gotta get activated. And four, we gotta warm up that nervous system. So we gotta rev up that nervous system. So our first one, Cam is gonna go into a skip. So high with the knees, he's pointing the toe up towards the head. He's slamming that ball of the foot into the floor and that heel is not gonna touch the ground. So our next one's gonna be our over under. So you're gonna see Cam goes over with that left foot and then under with that left foot. He is flipping the hips, so we want that hip rotation. Next one's gonna be our hamstring stretch. So he's just gonna point the toe up towards the head. You'll notice he's on his heel, that knee is straight, and he's just swiping the floor. His back is staying nice and flat. Think about there's a pencil in between the shoulder blades. He's gotta hold on to that pencil so that we're not rounding the back. He's getting a great hamstring stretch here. Our next one is gonna be our quad stretch with a lean. So he's gonna pull his heel up towards his hips and then from there we're gonna add a lean. By getting the knee back behind his hip, he actually gets a little bit of a hip flexor stretch instead of just our traditional quad stretch. So two birds and one stone on this one. So our next one are the Frankenstein kicks. So this is just a dynamic hamstring stretch. So you'll notice that he's keeping the knee straight and he's kicking across trying to get that leg nice and high. So this is a hamstring stretch, but now it's a little more dynamic and a little more elastic. So our next one is the adductor stretch, so the groin area. So he's gonna take two skips out and he's gonna go lateral, keeping that left leg straight as he goes to that right side. Most common strain in basketball and in mini sports is that adductor. So what we need to do is get it nice and lengthened before we do any workout or play a game. All right, so for our hip flexor stretch, we're still gonna go with a double lateral. So a little skip out, he's gonna land and he's gonna rotate towards that lead leg. So now we're getting that hip flexor nice and loose and then he pops back into that skip. He's going both sides, so he's getting both hip flexors nice and warmed up. For our hip mobility deep squat, what we're gonna do is three high skips. So he's going high with the right, high with the left, high with the right, land and deep squat. So we're challenging the hip mobility. Pretend like there's a fence. Get that foot all the way over the fence. Now on that landing, I want you to sit as low as you can. I wanna see your chest. I don't wanna see you collapse. So we're challenging that hip mobility and we're challenging the ankle mobility, one of the best combination mobility drills that we can add to our warmups. Now for our quick line into the stick, he's gonna go over the line as fast as he can. Go ahead, Cam, over the line. And then when I say stick, he's gonna stick with that right leg. That's extremely important for basketball because when we're making cuts, first we have to be on balance before we redirect all that force. That is the limiting factor to your explosiveness and your change of direction is your full body stability. So this is our Euro step stability. It's so important to have that ability to not only Euro step and create separation, create distance, but we gotta be able to stabilize. Otherwise, we can't be on balance to finish the layup. Okay, so we like to start every workout on a force plate test. So this shows me where his nervous system is at. If he's overtrained, his test is gonna be bad for the day, but I have his data for every day. So if he's jumping well and he's feeling good, then we know we can push forward with that intense workout. So he'll step on the force plates here. Ready, go. Boom, land nice and soft, good. And so now I can share the data with him. And so he put 4,000 Newtons of force in the ground on the takeoff. 
and he landed with uh, 2,100 newtons of force. So we wanna actually decrease that landing and land softer. And so now I can give him that objective feedback and he knows how he's jumping and landing. More importantly, I know if he's ready to go for this intense workout. Basketball is all about how you interact with the ground. So if I'm putting more force in the ground, I get further. On my jumps, if I put more force in the ground, I jump higher. Now when you look at injury prevention, we want less force. So all injuries are happening on the lowering portion or on the landing. So I want high force on the jump and then I want low force on the landing. Also, I can tell whether he's producing the force with the right or left leg. He had a 10% increase in his right leg on the jump and on the landing. So we actually want to focus on balancing the legs out for injury prevention reasons. So for the Da Vinci plank, he's gonna set up the cable at shoulder height. He's gonna step away from the cable machine. Now he's just gonna lift up this outside foot. So we're challenging the stability through this left hip, but this right oblique has to fire up. If this right oblique relaxes, he falls into what we call lateral flexion. And so we gotta keep the shoulders completely flat and the shoulders directly over the hips. So he's squeezing with that opposite oblique and you gotta breathe. We gotta relax and find a way to brace the core at the same time. Great core exercise, great full body stability. When you look at basketball, we take a lot of hits to the side of the body. If James is driving here and he hits somebody, if he's weak, he goes into lateral flexion. If he's strong, he can maintain his posture and finish. All right, so now we have our weighted jumps. So we can do this with a trap bar, or if you don't have a trap bar, we can all, always just hold a dumbbell between our legs. There's a lot of different ways that we could add weight. So we're using the boxes because on the way down, he can allow that box to absorb the weight instead of sticking the landing and having his knees absorb all of that weight. So we're getting good explosive training, but it's a little bit less stress to the knees. This is a just jump mat. I'm calculating his vertical. I don't give him the amount of reps. I just say, you go, and as soon as he drops off by more than 10%, we stop the set. So right now, he just did three really good reps, but then on his fourth rep, he started getting tired, he dropped down. We stopped the set then and there, because right now, we're after that nervous system, and we're after the fast switch muscle fibers. The world has been doing this wrong forever. High rep jump training is not where it's at. It's all about explosive quality reps. Okay, so weighted jumps. So what we're gonna do is set up in our deadlift position. So our knees are right over the toes, his hips are back, his back is nice and flat. Now from this position, he's jumping as high as he possibly can, and then he's gonna hit that landing. So get up, boom, good. We're calculating his vertical, that was 13.2. Boom, that's 16 inches, good, he's going up. We keep going. 16 inches, good. Let's see what you can get on this one. Fourth rep, down to 14, we stop the set. All right, so we're getting into place here. We're gonna do this on a box for now, so he's gonna lay back. Notice how we are offset here. So by offsetting, now he's gotta fire up this glute and fire up this oblique in the core, and then he's going with the traditional uh, one-arm bench press. All right, so this is your normal one-arm bench, it's just we're offset because now he has to really fire up that glute and this oblique. So yes, we're getting chest, yes, we're getting shoulder and tricep, but now we're firing up the core and that hip, when it comes to actually translating from the weight room to the court, we need that full body stability. Now, if you are a young athlete, we would probably go a traditional dumbbell bench press because you still gotta build some general strength and some size. For athletes like James, they have that strength and size. Now it's all about being functional and being able to translate it from the weight room to the court. This is a great way to do that. In basketball, single leg strength is everything. So we always say the game is played on one leg at a time, meaning when you're sliding, you have one leg on the ground at a given time. When I'm sprinting or cutting, I'm not cutting with both legs, I'm cutting with one leg on the ground. So from a performance enhancement and an injury prevention standpoint, we gotta get very, very strong in that one leg stance. So for our rear foot elevated split squat, how we like to set it up, ankle, directly underneath the knee. So with that stance, we're gonna get a good amount of that glute activation. So now he's just gonna grab the dumbbells. We're starting at 35 pounds, and from there, we're just standing straight up. Two seconds on the way down, he's gonna tap that back knee to the pad and explode up nice and fast. So we're really training 
that stance leg. So that quad, that glute, and the hamstring are getting a lot of work. This is one of the best ways that we can train and really, truly overload that lower body. Okay, so we're gonna go into an inverted row. So we're gonna use rings, but you could use a barbell if you would like to. So we're gonna elevate his feet to make it a little bit more difficult and get his body completely flat. We do not want the hips to sag. I gotta have him squeeze his glutes so he stays flat all the way through. And then we just go into a row. So he's pulling his chest all the way up towards those rings. So he's thinking about pulling from the torso. And what that does is we actually train those lats. We train the rhomboids, those muscles in between our shoulder blades. Back muscles are so important uh, for our overall performance and our strength on the court. Now, basketball, we do wear a tank top year round, so we do need some biceps. This is one of the best ways to build biceps, probably even better than bicep curls. You always gotta have some sort of inverted row in your program. So after an intense workout, we gotta get our recovery. So I'm gonna have him lay down on his back and I'm just gonna bring his leg up 90 degrees and then he's just going up and down with this other side. So notice we don't really do too much static stretching. I like to do it a little bit more dynamic even after the workout because that involves muscle contraction and then the muscle acts as a pump. So it pumps out all that lactic acid, all the bad stuff that we don't want, and it pumps in all the good nutrients so we can begin that repair process. Okay, so this one's more of a hip flexor. You're also gonna get some shoulder mobility. Hips forward, shoulders back, so that hip flexor is nice and long, hands together, and then he just leans. So hands together, lean as far as we can towards that lead leg. He's stretching out that right hip flexor, and then he brings it back and back down. Notice he's big with the shoulders, so we're getting some shoulder mobility, some upper back mobility. All right, so for our 90-90 get-ups, I want him 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here, and then he's just gonna roll to one side, trying not to use his hands, and then he's just gonna come up to a half kneel position, back down, don't just fall down to the floor, control it back down, and then back to the other side. So we're getting some good internal, external rotation at the hip, so important for our mobility on the court. And as a cool down, we're starting to uh, pump everything out of the glutes and we're getting some good movement. So even though most people would do this in a warm up, we actually like to do it in a cool down. He would do three to five repetitions on each side, just one set here. All right, for our last one, we're just gonna go kneeling ankle mobility. So he's gonna drive the knee as far as he can over that toe while he's keeping that heel down on the ground. So we're challenging that ankle mobility. He rocks it back and we go forward, hold for two seconds and rock back. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to our workout. Whether it's James Harden working out, trying to become the MVP, or just you trying to get to the next level and be the best version of you, we gotta work hard, we gotta work smart, we gotta work consistently. Take care of your nutrition, take care of your sleep. You're gonna see some good results. Peace.